And this is a very special Emma Talks because we're talking about a program that we have, the Emma Green Seal program that we actually started in 2003. And it is the only program globally in the entertainment industry that is talking about the actual production aspect as opposed to content. It's behind the scenes and it is a sustainability. Um, it's, it is how we measure sustainability in our, our physical productions. Um, we're really excited today to have two people who have made sustainable productions and sustainable um, sustainability their mission in their production company. And I want to first introduce Julie Christeas, who is the founder and CEO of Tandem Pictures. Um, you, got, you founded it in 2010. And Johnny Blitzstein, who is also the co-founder and CEO of Tandem. And you guys have a production company that's very unusual. And you guys actually have a mission statement, which we'll get to. But right now, you've won two Emma Green Seals just in 2019. And one is for your, your upcoming feature film, Black Bear, starring and produced by Aubrey Plaza, who is here with us today. And Aubrey, longtime fan, and your other credits include Ingrid Goes West, um, which you won the Independent Spirit Award for Best Feature and on TV Legion, and of course, Parks and Rec. Um, so we're so excited to have you guys here. I, I would love to jump right in. And Julie, if you could describe Tandem's mission statement as a company and kind of also explain how a production company has a mission statement. Sure, well, first Debbie, thanks so much for having us. We're so excited to be here talking to you and for this is a crazy time to release a film. Um, but we're so thrilled that Black Bear is coming out on Friday, December 4th. And I have to say that when we found out that Black Bear got awarded um, the gold green seal, I think Johnny and I yelled just as loud as when our last piece of financing came in. So, oh my God. <laughs> so we're, we're very, very excited about it. Um, so Tandem Pictures, I founded it in 2010. I, I really wanted to start a company where women had more opportunity in front and behind the camera um, and, and ended up going after first time filmmakers. And often those first time filmmakers are artists with from underrepresented communities or underrepresented voices themselves. And the mission developed very organically because the societal issues that impact those filmmakers the most and storytellers the most are social justice on one hand and climate change on the other hand. And Johnny and I really wanna live in a space where the, the intersectional environmental environmentalist conversation lives um, because we believe that you, you really can't look at social justice and not tilt the prism and have climate change um, and climate justice come into focus and, and vice versa. Um, so interesting. And I, I just also want to mention that both you and Johnny are new Emma board members with Tandem, which makes me so happy. And that's happy too. <laughs> and you, 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 you actually have created an incredible position on the Emma board as independent filmmakers who are, who are moving in the direction of really focusing on environmental justice within doing sustainability. So Johnny, why is it an imp important to, for people to have a platform for the planet today? Sure, um, it's a great question, Debbie. I think, uh, again, thanks for having us on here. This is awesome and we're delighted to talk about our company and talk with Aubrey about Black Bear. Um, you know, if you look at the fact that the temperature of the globe is gonna go up three degrees by the year 2100, and you start to see that we're living in, you know, we're living in climate change right now. Um, it's, it's a really scary time for, for people and the planet. And we see that both, as Julie mentioned, both of those two are linked. Um, there's, you know, the wildfires going on. People who are living in coastal areas are going to have more flooding, more hurricanes. And so it's important for us to start to look at, um, you know, when we think about the Black Lives Matter protests that happened over the summer, um, the, the loss of people's privacy due to the tech giants and, and companies out there, that, that it's important to look at both social justice 
for people and the justice for the planet and the climate itself together as one thing. So as Julie mentioned, um, we're an intersectional environmentalist company and we believe that having a platform to advocate for both the people and the planet is incredibly important right now. And there just aren't enough advocates yet who care about both those issues. And that's really why we are positioning our mission and, and existing in that way. I mean, it's amazing because there's honestly this, that's a very unique approach to finding projects. Um, Aubrey, how did you come together with Tandem and this project in particular? Um, I will well, really through the director, Larry um, Lawrence Levine, who wrote and directed the film, um, you know, brought it to me originally. And it was kind of born out of a lot of talks that we had had and inspired by some things that we had, we had discussed. And um, I think he always intended on for me to, to be in it and, and, and to produce it. And then, and then he kind of, uh, he linked us up with, with tandem um and you know that that part of the process i was i came on as kind of a creative producer and was very focused on like the cast and um you know just kind of like the department heads and like how how you know just thinking about the film kind of um in that way and then i think he he had he had a relationship with with julie and johnny um already and said that you know that he had interest in um in New York so so we kind of he was kind of spearheading that part and then we we kind of all came together once once you, they decided to come on board so was you so were you sort of surprised that they had this big overall mission when you when you were started working on this project because you don't usually get that when you're meeting producers no no I think that just no that didn't surprise me at all and I think that um one thing about Larry that I've always felt as like he has very good taste in in people and and people that he wants to collaborate with. So it 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 just it made a lot of sense. And I think this movie, more than most any movie I've done, it was not a no brainer. It was it's a really experimental film. It's it's you know you read the script and it's not an obvious marketable film. You know it's really art artistic and its nature. So I think we knew going into it that we were going to, that whoever was going to want to work on the film was going to be a, a very special kind of place, pr production company and, and special kind of person that was going to believe in something like this. So, um, so yeah, when Johnny and Julie had like such passion for it, it just made a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Johnny and Julie, um, can you describe some of the process that you had to go through knowing that you wanted this to be an, an exceptional green production? Sure, yeah. Um, I can start with pre-production, Julie, and then pass it your way. Um, you know, we started out by saying, we're gonna make this project green. We wanted to go after the Emma Green Seal. Um, so we sent out uh, initial notices to our um, ADs and other producers on the project to let them know that these were our initiatives. And then when we got to set, we started to share those with all of our department heads. And even as early as the location scout, um, Larry and I drove in a hybrid electric vehicle uh, up and down uh, the Northeast coast, looking for the location that we eventually found, which was in Long Lake, New York in the Adirondacks. Um, and then the house itself um, we found was off the grid. Um, it had uh, solar panels on top in, on, in this massive power station shed that was detached from the house that then switched over to batteries at night and then switched over to diesel, which powered a lot of our lighting. So we avoided having to use any gas generators on the shoot. Um, and re really, you know, looking at just the, the PGA peach guide and the EMH checklist and starting to go through that way. So that was really around pre-production. It was educating the department heads and starting to talk about the different pieces that we were gonna set up in advance so that we were positioned to win in terms of sustainability. Was yeah, that, I mean, oh, can I just jump in one sec? Yeah. Was that something that as a cast you were all aware of or was it just part of where you kind of showed up and then I would love Julie, obviously, to get into that. But like when you when you like stepped foot into that house, were you very aware that it was solar and battery and all of that? Um, I I mean I was, but I don't I don't know if the the rest of the cast knew. But I mean it, they were aware they were aware that it was a green set, just in terms of like you know 
there was no plat, you know, we weren't using plasticware. We were all, you know, we, it was almost like we were all living in the house using, you know, the actual plates from the house. And, you, you know, it felt like there was an immediate kind of sense of like, no, this culture that we're creating here is, is sustainable. And I think that, you know, everyone got their water bottle and everyone got, you know, everyone, everyone knew that like, you know, this wasn't like a normal set where we're going to be throwing out plastic bottles and on the ground and we're generating all this kind of, you know, waste. Like, I think that that, whether people knew it, you know, were aware of it or not, it was definitely a uh, part of the culture from the beginning. Amazing. Julie, I'm sorry. No, that's, a, that's exactly what I wanted to elaborate on was that, you know, I think dialing it back a little bit um, for Johnny and I, the, the first and most important thing as producers is that we meet the needs of the project creatively, fiscally, and practically. So for us, it becomes about looking at those puzzle pieces and shifting our perspective to say, okay, how can we meet the needs of this project with a sustainable viewpoint and taking action that means we have a green set. And often, you know, we don't, we don't try to overwhelm people with the mission that, that we have because on an independent film set, just making the work, just getting through the day is, is challenge enough, yeah. um, you know, with little time and little money. However, it's that perspective shift that allows us to talk with, you know, our producing partners like uh, Aubrey and also Lawrence, the director and all of the department heads and ask, okay, you know, this is almost a single location piece. Um, how, since we are all gonna be in one location, how big of a crew do we really need? And if we can be small and contained, what, how can we live? How can we use less vehicles? How, like Aubrey was saying, how can we, you know, make choices like not having single use plastic? How can we, um, how, how can we make the experience nicer being together by eating off of um, real plates and using flatware instead of having like our plastic forks and knives break and then throw them in the garbage. Right. And, and those are the practical elements, but also the creative ones where, you know, this particular movie helped us a lot because we had, um, you know, a filmmaker, Aubrey's character, we had a couple that was in Brooklyn. Um, so we could speak with our amazing costume designer, Ali Pierce and say, you know, if you're creating this type of look anyway, are there ways that we can use, you know, thrift shops? Are there reused elements? Are there things that could be remade? Um, and all of the answers were always yes. And it wasn't just costumes, it was production design, working really hard to source um, locally everything that she could. Tracy Dishman did an amazing job um, to make that place um, look authentic um, to where we were but also not be purchasing or traveling in a bunch of rentals and using gasoline, um, you know, for every single rental that we had to make. Everyone was just really conscious um, as we as we worked to put this project together. And I, I mean, I really don't think the team could have done a better job. Johnny and I were so thankful. I mean, I think it's interesting because I think that the mindset on independent films is so different than when you're dealing with a huge studio film. And I, I think that to me, um, having, you know, had this Emma Green Seal for almost 18 years and knowing, you know, the different applicants every year, and we get hundreds at this point, fortunately, um, I think that there's that sense of community, like, like Aubrey, like you were saying, like, we're all doing this together. This is a passion for us. We're doing it and we want to do it in a way that it makes it, makes it, um, makes an impact on more levels than, than if I was just showing up for work. And so it's interesting to me the way the independent um, film community has been able to really rally behind the Emma Green Seal guidelines. And to your point, sometimes it's financially advantageous. You know, a smaller crew potentially, a smaller footprint, more conscious. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting balance um, in terms of the industry as a whole. And we, we were founded on content. And so I think that, you know, pivoting, you know, uh, 12 years in, 13 years into the organization to having this be a really serious priority as well. 
Um, Aubrey, I'm interested for you as to, as to the attraction to both the story and the way it was gonna be shot. Like, um, obviously there was something that other than your friendship with Larry, what was it that drew you to this project? Well, I mean, the script, I think it's, it's a really, it's a really complex character. Um, and without, you know, giving too many spoilers, it's, there's a kind of device that happens in the movie where essentially there's two parts in the film. And so Christopher Abbott, Sarah Gadden and I almost got to play multiple characters, which as an actor is very appealing because it's like, you know, it's like, two in one and it's like you can you know it's, it was a very challenge it was clear to me that it was a very challenging role and so that's what that's what got me excited about it at first um just being able to tackle something that scared the shit out of me honestly like it was just like I don't know how I can pull this off um but it was something that I think I was drawn to because of how how kind of scary it was um and and I just think the the subject matter is very personal to me. And I think in some ways the movie is almost a kind of deconstruction of the independent filmmaking process, at least in the second half. So, and I knew that we were gonna be shooting on a, in, on a, in a remote like location with a very small crew and a small budget. So there was something really interesting to me about making a movie about making a movie about making a movie <laughs> and and knowing and knowing that you know we we were going to have to get creative in how we were going to do that um, was just like really you know real filmmaker nerd you know part of my brain because I went to film school I went to NYU I grew up making like little movies like independent films are really one of the things that I love the most. Um, and so it, in some ways it, it was just like this true exploration of that process of making a small movie. So it was, and, but it was written almost like a play. So there, it, it kind of had everything that I love in one script. And, um, and, and so it was just like too much for me to pass up. As the audience, it was so surprising, which is, was great because I didn't expect the turn. And um, yeah. it, was, it was really wonderful to be able to kind of see all of that. And also you were also out in nature a lot in the movie and you were out yeah. you know, amongst, you know, <laughs> and so it was really beautiful on top of that. And so, I mean, to me, it was great. My Asher went to NYU. I went to USC film school a million years ago. And right. so film school nerds all around and, you know, all of, all of us here, I totally get it. It was just like, it was that thing that like you would love to see and so often aren't, isn't made. And so yes. it, it was, it really appealed to me on, on that level as well. Also being able to watch actors have to pivot and change and go into something completely different is is something again that you know they usually don't give you a hundred million dollars to do and so no. I think there's such a special place for an independent film um as a producer aubrey um what what, what was like the most challenging thing about shooting this film um I would say, honestly, the location, I think we could all probably agree. It presented, you know, challenges <laughs> that I, I think I was never anticipating. And I think being a producer is just all about problem solving and, um, you know, trying to prevent um, things, you know, from happening before they happen. And, and there were just things about this location that were just, that were really hard, like, you know, the, the, the night shoots in a location where we, you know, we were losing power and we were just um, dealing with bugs and dealing with like, you know, yeah, all a lot of bugs, just weather, <laughs> weather and rain and, you know, schedules shifting and, um, you know, just and shooting in a in the house where where a lot of the crew was staying, which again is a very sustainable 
practice. Um, psychologically, I don't know how, if Larry would ever do that again or if the DP would ever do that again, but, um, but there was, you know, that it, it, you know, there wasn't an obvious, you know, we didn't have trailers. It wasn't like, oh, now I'm going to go back to my trailer and, you know, have a cup of tea and relax. It was like, no, we're fully immersed in this experience at all times. So I think for me, um, other than my kind of, you know, role, acting uh, role, it, it was more, I was very focused on just the culture of the set and, and just being kind of sensitive to, to the, the experience of the crew and making sure that the cast was comfortable. Um, and, you know, cause I knew that Julie and Johnny were dealing with like, you know, all the other kinds of things that were happening. So for me, it was more just about really p just paying attention to the people and, and to kind of like, you know, the, the experience that everyone was having, because for me, it's, it's just as important as the end product of the film. It's like, doesn't matter to me, you know, what happens with the movie. It's, it's the experience of making it that is the most joyful part for me. And I think for the crew too, it's like, you know, at the end, when, it, when it's over, we all go away and yes, there's a movie we can watch, but, but we'll never get that, you know, part of our lives back. So I think it's, there were, there were, there were moments that were really special. Like, um, like Sarah and I, after lunch w would always go, you know, to where the camera crew guys had their little, coffee station and we would like make matcha lattes with them and you know we would use their equipment to do it and it you know there was no craft service truck it was like we all had to kind of improvise but I think it created it it brought us all closer together and I think ultimately um that kind of in, infused into the film in a way um so I think it was it was hard but I think it, it all kind of happened how it should how it was supposed to happen maybe yeah and and Julie and Johnny, what about producing this film under these unique circumstances and having budget and sustainability top of mind? Well, I will say that Aubrey is 100% right that the, that the location was a really big challenge. And at, the Adirondacks is absolutely gorgeous and everyone should go visit. And a very funny story is that because we had such limited cell phone reception, um, there was a day where my mother was texting me saying, oh, I just read an article, honey, that you're in a place with no connectivity and you can really unplug. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Why are you responding to me? And that's why I wasn't responding to her because no, I wasn't getting it and I wasn't getting anything. And we were like constantly trying to figure out the internet situation. And then just beyond that, you know, speaking of climate change, we were supposed to have nights that were like 45, 50 degrees in the summer. We had a huge heat wave. We had nights that were 70, 75 degrees. So the amount of bugs, which normally is high, were just so much worse. There was a day on set where Aubrey and Chris literally doing a scene, walking down a path, got attacked by black flies and the production oh managers God. running with like, you know, oh uh, natural insect repellent and doing whatever we could, but it was like, wow. you know, that, that was tough. Um, and, and also, you know, as, as fortunate as we were to find such an incredible location that functioned on solar, one of the, you know, every other day things that happen was that when the building would convert from solar energy to battery power, the lights would go out. And, you know, we would be working. We didn't know when that was gonna happen. So there were some really <laughs> inopportune moments. I, I believe it happens <laughs> when I was out. completely naked having a Merkin put on me at one point. Right. That was, that that was, was one, one of the time times. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll not, never it was not that, funny that in the moment. moment. You also had you a didn't find it funny in the moment. Place. You were fine. You were amazing. And the, you know, our our hair and makeup team were like, I've never seen anyone so so calm and cool as we were like, so sorry, we can't finish yeah. doing our work until the lights come on. But so Johnny and I were in a full naked. tilt panic <laughs> trying yeah. to get the lights. Our GE team was amazing. So every day or every other day, they would, you know, run to the shed and help sort out that transition so we could get power up more quickly. And then, you know, we got better at it as time went on, but that was absolutely a challenge wow. for sure. Mm -hmm remote was just wild we had at one point the fireplace we had we had a the this the long scene with the three of them in the, the end of part one um uh we had to um or in part two we had to 
redo the logs multiple times and then the smoke started filling the house and the fire alarms all started coming <laughs> oh, out. My, oh my god <laughs> forgot about that there was just some you know house stuff we had to deal with and then be as as aubrey mentioned a lot of the crew was living in the house so we had you know people using washer dryers and the dishwasher running from cleaning all the dishes because we weren't using disposables and so all of that was a strain on the power oh, uh, so wow. it was just Th those add, you know, added difficulty. The and then the timing house, of uh, all of those things was very delicate. Yeah, and the house itself was like a, three miles down a dirt road that was very remote. So it just going to town just to like, hey, we need this thing from the grocery store became like a forty-five minute ordeal there and back. So mm -hmm. um, it was. Definitely it was also awesome because we got to see black bear and deer and so yeah. many like so much really amazing Wild. wildlife in that area too. For sure. Right, right. So yeah. tell me, just were all the outages worth the gold Emma Green Seal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For us, the answer is yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so let me ask you um, also, Julie and Johnny, how do you choose projects? Like, what is your process? This obviously was a very unique and special and incredible film. What is your process when you look for projects? I mean, it really is the script. I think what Aubrey said absolutely was right. You know, when when Johnny read the script first, he sent it to me. I read it and I, I loved it. I thought it was the most beautifully written dialogue I'd read all year. I wanted to meet um, Lawrence, the writer director, immediately. I got out to Los Angeles and and then once you know we agree that we love love the project that it's talking about something that's happening in the world that maybe you know studio movies um, don't aren't dealing with in in an intimate way that independent films can it's about the team and when I spoke to Lawrence about his script because for me the messaging around gender and you know how women are treated in the workplace not only by men but how we treat each other um, was was so meaningful to me and so beautifully dealt with. I wanted to meet the, the man who had written yeah. this work. And he was so honest and his answers came from such a place of thoughtfulness and love that I was like, well, okay, let's, let's, um, let's work on this together. And then he, he told us about some of the team members that he wanted to include. Aubrey obviously was at the top of that list because she not only helped him develop the work, she came up with the title and also, as she said, was really involved in so many aspects of production, but also post um, and, uh, and, and maintained a relationship with the team as we went through the edit. And even though you were working and really busy, was, was always available for notes and phone calls and feedback. Um, you know, a very involved producer. So when we heard Aubrey was attached to it, I think both Johnny and I said, well, whatever her schedule is, let's <laughs> just make the movie when she's free yeah. um, because we're, we're not going to get a better person than the person who this was written for and who developed the work. So that, that part of it was a no brainer for us. The tough part was trying to figure out, you know, how do we, how are we gonna sell it? And how are we going to complete the financing on it? Because it was a project that, um, you know, I don't. Again, I don't want to ruin anything for people, but it is it is unique. Um, it's wonderful, but it doesn't follow the normal structure that that films have. Um, so that that was part of the challenge for Johnny and I. But but I'd say that we really wanted to take that challenge on, and we really wanted to partner with Lawrence on this because we just fell in love with the, the text. I get it, I get it. It's, it's also an unusual time in content right now in that not only are we home all the time, but I think it's changed viewing habits too. And I think people are looking for things that are not just according to the standard playbook in a sense. Like people, I think people are more open to wanting to experience something because they can, and I do think some of those habits are not gonna go away. Like for me, like I know I'm so hungry for anything that feels interesting to watch and, um, and the accessibility of streaming, even if there's, you know, the same kind of release date in a theater and also, you know, whether it's the same day or whether it's five days later, I think that it's allowing an audience 
Um, and it's the same for documentaries as well, um, which is sort of a different conversation. But I think having a special project is, is there's, you're more likely to get the audience now than I think ever before. Um, speaking of COVID, which we haven't talked so. about, <laughs> speaking of COVID, what do you do? I know, you know, Asher just, just shot a film in, in New Mexico it, just a second ago. He just got back and it was an indie and, and COVID regulations were everywhere. And it definitely alters like some of what you're talking about. We've been trying to deal with like craft services for all these years and getting certain things to happen on sets. And because of the health safety element of COVID, what does that do for a sustainable set? Like you may even need to help us with our guidelines, you know, moving forward in terms of for the next year or so, like what are people doing? What it, it makes it really tough. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for ourselves and then Aubrey, I know that you've, you've shot a bunch of stuff during this time too. Right. You know, um, half of our, part of our business is also on the commercial side. Um, we had an independent film that was meant to shoot this summer that had to push to next year, um, mostly because of insurance purposes and, and, you know, under $5 million movies, it's like, do we want to take the chance of being shut down at the height of the pandemic? Exactly. No, um, you know, that could be catastrophic for a project, depending on how far in you get. Um, and then what happens to our, to our cast, depending on how long we would get shut down for. Right. Um, and on the commercial side, you know, we watched a ton of projects vanish and we were able to convert a couple, a couple of them um, into fully remote shoots and then part hybrid, part remote shoots. Um, we did a lot of investigating on compostable masks and things, but never really got data or science around the e efficacy of those products. So, you know, there's definitely a lot more um, waste because of all the PPE that needs to be changed out and that's to keep people safe. But I will say that even though the production part um, may have had more challenges on the sustainable side, especially because, you know, it's like um, prepackaged food and things. There's right. no, there, you know, there's no buffet. People are just given what they're given. Right. On the post side, you know, um, digital video villages and people working from home, we're right. sort of able to have a balance because although COVID has created this huge challenge, it's also created forums like this where none of us had to fly to be together, but here we are still right. having a conversation. Um, so it's great it's, point. It's a great it's point. It's been a balance. Yeah. The efficacy of this digital technology has been proven by COVID in a way that we can actually, you know, you can have a conversation that's meaningful and you can connect with people, which is a, a reminder that it's, you know, that human connection is human connection. It transcends, you know, technology and everything because to get together and be able to talk like this is really important and it's something that just sustains our humanity. Right, right. And I do think that people in the industry have been so caught up in, in the plastic waste, which is we were going getting so far, you know, doing so well reducing that, that I think that to your point, the travel, the smaller crews, the, the footprint is, if not balancing, is a whole other story of success in terms of sustainability, as opposed to just focusing on on the things that has been altered. Aubrey, how is it, how, did you, what, you just shot something or have you shot a couple of things? I, I've only shot one thing. Um, can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Sorry, my headphones were doing a weird thing. Um, I've only shot, I did, I did one day on a Sarah Cooper's comedy special for Netflix. Um, and so I got to experience like the COVID set and, and you know, it was, it was it was okay it was it was weird but i think like in my opinion you know productions crews are are really the the most ideal kind of you know group of people to take something like this on because they already function like an army in some ways like they're you know everyone is so disciplined and no you know it's like there's protocol and there's so i feel like production I feel like it's a natural kind of extension of what we already do um so I think I think it can work 
but it's definitely isolating, you know, like it's, it's a, it takes, you know, some of the fun out of, you know, just that kind of everyday interaction with people. I think that just on a interpersonal level, I think people have to be more conscious of, you know, connect, communicating because we're all masked up. So you can't, it's like, you might not even realize who you're talking to, like th those kinds of things, but, um, but it's totally doable and, um, and it's just a weird adjustment. But then in terms of posts too, like I, I've just finished directing an episode of this TV show that um, is going to be on Showtime that my partner created that is an entirely post show. Um, oh, wow. And it, it hasn't like been announced yet or anything. So I shouldn't like talk about it too much, but basically it's kind of, it's the, it's the ultimate sustainable production because there's no shooting at all. It's, it's reusing old films and old footage to make new stories. Um, but I've been totally blown away by just like how easy it's been to, to edit with someone on zoom and to, and, and to still feel that connection. Um, because in some ways when you're editing, normally you're sitting behind the editor, you're staring at their back the whole time. Um, and then now, now you're kind of face to face with them. So I don't, you know, I'm new to that process a little bit, but it's, it's interesting to me that like, in some ways it's, it's almost making the post process more intimate. Um, and then I've had a couple, I've had a couple animation projects in development over the, over the years. And when the quarantine hit in the spring, both of my um, animated shows kind of got pushed forward because the studios were like, well, this is something that we can do, you know? Um, so that's been really, really cool too, to kind of like go through the animation process um, during COVID because it's total, again, totally doable. I've been recording in my garage in the mornings. I've been, I have a whole setup. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that they've sent me and uh, my neighbors definitely are concerned uh, <laughs> uh, because I've been screaming about the Antichrist in my garage <laughs> at 9 a.m. <laughs> but I just have to just have to tell your neighbors, look, we're, we're all shooting at home now, so whatever you hear, don't don't pay attention. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I've I've recorded in my garage. I've recorded in my closet. I mean, I've recorded like it's you just so gotta fun. get create gotta get creative, but there's a way to do it. We're all finding ways to, to make things still, which is fun, which is good. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think, Julie and Johnny, were always sort of like the next phase of sustainability on a set, like moving forward, even, you know, the, the more rigorous, you know, adherence to the Emma Greenseal, um, requirements like can you imagine like where we would be because interestingly like what you're talking about with COVID is I think again could be something that um, informs the future of sustainability by by being able to um, you know do especially what you're talking about with post and and the um, the intimacy of of not being together somewhere um, do you see that as something that's real and viable and even cost saving? Absolutely cost saving. I mean, there's no there's no investor in the world that we know anyway that we could say, listen, this is all great practice and it's going to help a bunch of people. It's going to cost you a lot more money, though. Are you in? And they'd say yes. Right. Um, so, you know, it's it's a business and there is absolutely a cost savings at the end of it. Um, but I will say, you know, for, for behavior change to really happen, it's always, it's always about two things. It's about education and it's about reward. And so for Johnny and I, the, the education part is something that we really want to be involved in. We want to keep having conversations like this where we can talk about specifics of how we did it and great partners like the Environmental Media Association who truly give producers a roadmap to look at and understand all of the places that you can work across to be sustainable. You know, the Producers Guild of America has a peach guide that's out that also is a wonderful roadmap for people to start getting across what are the different areas of production that I can make a perspective shift in and then a behavior change in. And then the other piece is reward. 
You know, um, a, a friend of mine and I were having a conversation a couple months ago and he was saying, you know, all too often we, we reward people for all sorts of behavior that is not beneficial to anyone but them. Why not reward people who are behaving in a way that actually respects others and the planet we live on? And it was like a light bulb all of a sudden, Johnny and I were like, we need to reward producers for making these choices. And so we are actively, you know, working on a plan um, to come up with the first producers green award where, where a monetary reward will be given to a producer who has done the most across sustainability on their project. And so many of our colleagues go from you know, film to film, the fees are are low and sometimes n none at all if they've put their fee back into the movie. And it's extremely hard to make um, to make a life in this industry. And 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 we want to pay attention to people who are doing their best to do it in a way that that doesn't do harm to anyone else um, or this earth that we live on while they do it. So right. I, I think that's where it's at for us. We want to we want to. Um, help on the education front and keep educating ourselves and and do more to to help others get get rewarded for that positive behavior we may grab some of your quotes for the website under the emma green spiel because it's so it's like it's so eloquently you just said exactly what the intent has always been so thank you for that Johnny, I don't know how you're gonna add to that. Like, I don't know where you I go. Was, I was just gonna say that awareness, it's, it's, you know, it starts with awareness. That's the umbrella under all of this. I think, as you said, hundreds of people are submitting for the Green Seal every year. We want that number to be thousands. There's tens of thousands of movies and TVs and TV shows and pilots that are getting created independently. And while the studios are really aware and working very, very diligently at the corporate social responsibility level to execute green productions. It's not happening enough at the independent level. And so all of the work is, is in that hybrid between education and awareness. And so joining the board of the Environmental Media Association for us is about um, joining that community, starting to get out there on social. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of the press and PR and hopefully more interviews to really spread the word and raise awareness so that more independent filmmakers take these actions uh, ahead of time before they go into production. I mean, really appreciate it because uh, I will say that in 2003, when we gathered like a group of our board members, which included a couple of network heads and producers and actors, we basically were like, what is nobody gonna yell at us about? What can we do that's not gonna cost more money and we won't get yelled at? And that's kind of how we had to start this because I, you, I probably remember more than you guys do, but I mean, they were still messengering pages over to people's houses at that point. And it was crazy, the things that they were doing. And it's always been that we'd like to, the best thing would be to save money by being sustainable, not to add more headache to, to the, the, you know, the impact of, of the overall budget. And so what you guys are saying and bringing it out to the independent community is like our dream. I mean, we've got the studios on our board. They're sort of now required to give that information to everything, everybody who goes into production, but the indie world is massive and so powerful. And, you know, having leaders like you is incredible. And Aubrey, what you've done with your work and being conscious um, is really important. And so thank and you. I just want to say something about Aubrey quickly too. You know, the other thing is the team and, I have to say, like for any effort that was made either from Johnny and I or or the production team, I don't think anyone would have really bought in had they not seen Aubrey like take the lead and say, oh, cool, I'm getting a bottle that I need to refill. Oh, cool, like I'm going to put my plate in the sink because they're going to be washed at the end of the day. Um, oh, cool, I'm going to, you know, scrape my food into a disgusting compost pile that Scott's going to take away later. <laughs> like, you know, if... <laughs> If if um, if Aubrey and, and Chris and Sarah hadn't been like so game um, and so like generous, generous had generosity of spirit going into a production like this, it would have made everything just so right. difficult and really difficult to get anyone else to behave that way. So I don't know if we've ever said that to you, Aubrey, but we owe you a debt of gratitude for that. Thank so thank you. Julie, that's very sweet. It's true. So true. Love you guys.
We love you too. Well, I'm happy to, uh, I'm so happy that we did that. And I, I'm, I'm, even though I'm not on the board, I will, I'm very, very, very conscious about spreading the awareness of this too. So I hope that I can bring that into every production I go into. Well, clearly we have a history. So, right, Aubrey? Yes, we do. We do. We go way back.